Hi, my name is Marvin Martinez. I'm from San Ildefonso Pueblo. I come from the, the Pueblo that's well known for the black on black pottery. My great grandmother was Maria Martinez. I was raised by my grandfolks, Adam and Santana Martinez. And there, that's where I learned the traditional pottery making. And so you brought in some work today. You're out wholesaling today. Tell me a little bit about um, these uh, pieces that you've brought. Yes, I'm out here wholesaling today. These are the fetish bears that I do also. And then I have a couple of the traditional bowls here, one with the rain serpent design here with the turquoise on there. And then I have a kiva bowl with the kiva steps, the shape here. And I have the arrowhead fetish there. And this is the most, one of the most traditional designs that I carry on the rain serpent, which is my favorite design to paint on the pottery. Yes, the Avanya, the rain serpent, is unique in its own way of life because it brings the water with the clouds that gather up in the skies, the dark clouds. When the rains do come in the, during the summer months, it is believed the dry river beds <clears throat> begin to flow with, the, with the, the help of the rain serpent, the prayers that go into that design is bringing the water down the dry river beds during the summertime. So that is one of the most um, desired um, and respected designs. That way we can have water for the summer crops. When you're making your pottery, what are, what are you thinking about? I'm, I'm assuming you talk to the clay and you, you say your prayer before you make it. And, and, um, but what, what really inspires you when you're doing your pottery? I think what the most, um, it brings the most inspiring part of doing the pottery, gathering the clay, throwing that cornmeal to thank Mother Earth for what it's given us and to be thankful for. And I, a lot of times this have been from generation to generation to have been said that we give the offering of the cornmeal to the Mother Earth for for giving um, thanks and all the all the native people in the world know that this is one of the things that we can come to heart with and come to reality and come to to family culture and you're in the native world well with maria i was she was pretty elderly when i when i was growing up as a young boy and Back in 1969, I remember when she came to move in with my grandfolks, Adam and Santana, she had cataract surgery in her eyes. And I remember as a young boy, her coming home from the hospital with um, the eye patches on, on both of her eyes. And at first I was a little scared being a young little boy. And then <clears throat> as we began to talk and I would help her with getting her or juice or drinks or coffee. I, I've listened to her and talked with her and I was growing up and just grew up around her as a young boy. And I think just being with the old folks there made me feel that there's something out there that we can learn that right for now, but later on, I think it will come back to me as I feel today that it does make me feel that it helped me be wiser now that I'm in middle age. But um, Maria was a very nice woman. She was very giving. She was not selfish. She helped other people. People came to visit her when I was there with her. And she gave advice to other, many other people, native people, as well as other cultures. Pueblos, relatives, friends that came to visit her, she would help them any way that she could. And I think that was what I, when I seen that, it made me feel that, wow, she's a special person and I'm thankful that, you know, she was my great grandmother. And there was times that, you know, that I could just go sit next to her and feel comfortable and secure and 
I did not know my great grandfather Julian. He had passed away in 1943. So, but the stories from Maria, you know, it sounded like he was a very well respected man in the community as well as the art world and throughout the country. Well, growing up with my grandfolks, Adam and Santana Martinez, Adam was the son of Maria, and he lived the longest, he was the oldest, and with growing up with my grandfolks, there was a lot of um, inf informative um, growing into the, the pottery world, and then also the culture, the Tewa language that I've learned from my grandfolks, and that was very, very um, important, especially in my generation, because it helped me a lot now that I'm a middle-aged person. It really advanced me, and a lot of times I know now what my grandfather and grandmother were talking about, that the Tewa language was very important for me to learn and know, and then as well as the pottery that I can always have in my heart, and nobody can take that away from me, and then I can carry on this tradition throughout my years of living on this earth. But I, I do very much thank them both, and I thank them that what they have taught me, and I was, I was going to pass it on to my children, which they now know how to do the pottery as well. And growing up with my grandfolks, Maria and Maria's sister, my Aunt Clara, it was a very, very lovely atmosphere. And I enjoyed living with them and also traveling with them to different art shows. So that was, I was very thankful for that. While doing the pottery, my wife and I, Frances Martinez, we started the pottery together in 1989. And Frances comes from a background of um, black pottery also from Santa Clara. So she learned from her mother how to do the polishing. And I do the painting now. So together we do the pottery making together. My wife, Frances, does the polishing with the traditional way with the river stone rubbing it with the red slip, and then I do the painting on the pottery, whereas Maria and Julian did the same style. Each person had their duties of the pottery, where, whereas Maria did the polishing and making, and then Julian did the painting on the pottery. So we, we do the same traditional manner, as well as my grandfolks, Adam and Santana. So we like to keep that going in that same manner through our lives. Thank you.